Hello, good day, and welcome to the stretch. So today, I'm going to talk along the line of things you would experience or go through when your partner masturbates. Now, the purpose of this video, I'll add as a disclaimer, is not so you can use it as a parameter to check your partner and judge them. No, it's so that you can know. You can use this as yardsticks, as templates to know for sure that, okay, probably this person is masturbating and is keeping it away from you. And the effect is overflowing into your relationship. Every sexual behavior, every sexual addiction has effects. And most times when we don't go through the length, the discipline to curb these things, they overflow into our relationship and tends to cause lots of havoc like viruses do so the purpose of this video is not so you can judge your partner or so you can sit down and gloat and be like yeah i've known this as a yardstick to know that you and point accusing fingers no that's not the purpose the purpose is to know and understand the silent struggles of people whom probably you are dating and know how to help them without embarrassing them so you can use this as a yardstick to know okay this person i'm going out with she masturbates he masturbates and the concept consequences are telling on our relationship how do i help her how do i um how do i um go about helping him so that's the purpose of this video stay with me when i come back i'll go through the full list say ya Welcome back. So, how? What are the things you experience when your partner masturbates, or your partner is addicted to masturbation? Now, let me, for sake of um, ecological purposes, let me define masturbation. Personally, I define masturbation to be um, the simulation of sexual experiences while stimulating the genitals in order to achieve a release or escape an urge or sachet an urge rather. So, and most times when people do these things and they are in relationship, it bear consequences and those consequences most times overflows to the relationship and tend to fight it or tend to destroy it. So what are the things you ex um, experience when you are in a relationship with someone who masturbates or is given to addiction or is um, bound by it, by masturbation? What are the things you experience? What are the signature experiences you go through or things you have to pass through. So I'll just go straight to the matter. Number one is inconsistencies. One of the things you, when you meet a partner and uh, you meet a partner or you are dating someone and you notice there is gross inconsistency, probably in their decision, in their choices, it often reflects in their decision, in their choices, not just in the le level of their availability to you. You can see today they believe this, they choose this, tomorrow they are changing side, you know, they are just jittering and, you know, um switching between sides there, there's no consistency they are they can't stay in one one place they are years they are years can't be trusted they are no can't be trusted there's there today they are here tomorrow they are there next tomorrow they are nowhere to be found and they come back again being they are just they are just like independent variables you know they are not trusted they are just all over the places with their decisions with their actions so one of the core these things you know about it is that there's inconsistency. I, I I can go into detail to explain this, but it will take um, more time and that's not the purpose of my video. So number two, another signature experience you go through with when your partner is addicted to masturbation or masturbates habitually is mood swings. You experience mood swing. And when I mean mood swing, I mean personality glitches that comes with a lot of drama. So today they are, they are calm, they are okay before you know they switch to something else they, you, you never get to enjoy the real them for long it's like they are always switching between moods they are always switching between personalities and it's coming with a with lots of drama bouts of drama and it's almost agitating you like you, you you can't be at peace with these people even when you try to cope with their mood swings the personality glitches their dramas it's like these people are everybody and nobody at the same time remember i said the purpose of listing these templates out is not to judge them but to better know how to help them because most times people can be going through struggles they don't want their loved ones to know about but these are signature manifestations that can help you know could it be okay this person is going into something like this so you start probably praying for them 
or seeking counsel for them or sharing materials and even buying it as give doing it as though you are doing it absent-mindedly just to help them and also if you are masturbating or you are addicted to masturbation you can know by this template the effect this habit is having on your relationship and pity that day one you are loving and better take up the responsibility to to curb it so number three is um romance-centered love most times when people masturbate your partner masturbates or even if you are the one masturbated and you are in love your love will be romance-centered if it's not romance you are you are not interested and this is because you built your mind to the level where it can only draw dopamine it can only draw pleasure when they are sexual high so things like holding hands just sitting and talking watching movies cuddling taking a stroll together doesn't mean it's tattoo to you. It doesn't make any sense to you. Your brain is used to getting pleasure at that peak level. And it is it will always seek after that. And when your partner most times can't give this, it, it always brings issues. So another signature experience you notice with people who masturbate, or even if you masturbate, you notice in your relationship is love on romance-centered love. So anytime you meet with the partner, you are you are you are almost escaping, talking, connecting, and you're almost going for the romantic like it's like you are always rushing to just get to that point where you are relieved of your urge or of your sexual desires so this is this is another thing when you notice you are with a partner that is always keeping basic connections like talking flogging issues out listening to you understanding you expressing themselves to you help trying to let you understand them and they, all they just do when you meet is romance you meet is romance they don't have time to sit down and talk with you and connect on deep emotional levels on on deep matters they are just is like every time you know is is a signature um trait that the person is giving to masturbation so number four is short attention and connectivity span this is related to number five but it's entirely different in the sense that even when they tend to give you that attention and connectivity it's short span and most often drive towards the romantic so it's like whenever they give you they give you as a bargaining chip for you to open up to the romantic you know i could say this because i've experienced this and i've never hidden it as a fact that i masturbated myself so i've i've experienced people do these things to me and when i take inventory on my own relationships i've seen myself do it to others while i was still with the habit so i knew these are signature templates to know what um your partner might be doing so short attention and connectivity span they, they can't connect with you for long and even when they try to connect even when they try to pay attention it's often so that you just open up for them to get released you know they try to use it as a bargaining chip to soften you and get you to just accommodate whatever they want to do so that's that so number five is incessant conflict this one is even a chief a chief um signature signature occurrence incessant conflicts quarrels fights arguments you know there's there's always it's like you it's like you guys are having a war that never gets resolved even after winning many battles the war never gets resolved you know it's it's and most times because things like this are around but people think it's normal we live in a generation where we take a lot of unimaginable things to be normal because it's happening across diverse relationship and almost entirely in the society so we think okay if i'm experiencing it this person is experiencing it that person is experiencing it every tom dick and harry are doing it probably it's just it's natural it's a you no 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 some things are not natural so so when you see incessant conflicts quarrels arguments fights wars that never get resolved even when you are progressively and determinately winning battles you know that something is something is, is is more than just you and the person there is something overflowing from the person's sexual life into the relationship trying to smother it trying to sabotage it trying, trying to kill it so this is another another thing to notice then number f number six the sixth um point which is which could even be like the chiefest of all is this two weeks on two weeks off emotion and passion level so there you notice that 
there are always these two weeks high and two weeks low. It's like um, <laughs> like this um trading charts. You know, it goes up for two weeks, come down for two weeks, goes up again for two weeks, come down for another two weeks, then peaks again. You know, it's it's like that. It's a signature. When you see things like this, you could know. Okay, probably this person might be struggling or addicted to masturbation this person masturbates and the reason for that is because in fact the reason for majority of these six points is because most times these people are used to giving themselves pleasure so when they meet with you there is little they can do to gain that pleasure there is little you can contribute to their pleasure there is so little you can contribute to pleasure for them so most times when they meet with you it's always to get to that level because every other thing you do is very insignificant because they've built their mind they've built their their um pleasure frequency to a point where if it's not high pitched it doesn't make sound it doesn't make sense it doesn't make meaning so these are things you would experience and you experience this because it helps you 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 are trying to help them you are trying to love them you are trying to understand what is happening to you so you don't think someone or one spirit from your village is fighting your relationship. This might more, this might just be what is wrong. So, I hope it's helpful. I hope you like it. And I pray in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. Every relationship stealing your peace, stealing your joy. That you are not actively contributing to that factor of your peace and your joy being stolen. I separate you from it in the name of Jesus. Or I give you grace to work things out and to work things to perfection. So, if you've noticed this and you notice, okay... Ah, I see. Every of these six things you mentioned are happening in my relationship. You can just stylishly share my videos with your partners, especially videos where I, where I talk on sexual addictions and, you know, try to help them because they might be struggling and be so embarrassed to let you know about it. But you, when, when you see these templates, use it as a, guide, as, a, as a guide to help you know, okay, this is what this person is struggling with and it's from this struggle that is that the problem is overflowing into our relationship affecting our communication our, our connectivity our passion our love and you now know what to do so i wish you the best i am still josiah emmanuel adeza and this is the stretch thank you so much i value your viewership bye